Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Rhino Show Podcast. The show that gives you safe spaces to have unsafe conversations and live yourself full self on purpose. Our whole mandate is to help you do life and business better. I have an amazing guest coming on the show. We've even talked before. Her name is her name is Shannon Bex Basada. Um, and she's very well known for her uh, role in the Danny D. Kane band. Also, the reality show, and I'm going to call it the OG reality show, making the band for MTV yeah. and Diddy and all that stuff. Uh, I want to get right into this conversation today because to say this has layers is an understatement. Shannon, welcome to the show. Welcome home. And you are awesome. Thank you. I'm so excited to talk with you. Like you mentioned, we had a chance to connect before and what I appreciate you and, and the way you go about things is, is sincere. It's connecting on the human level. It's, it's trying to find wisdom for not just our conversation, but for those that are listening and it's uplifting. Um, mm. So I appreciate that about how, how you do you. Thanks, Shannon. You know what? I'm just trying. I'm trying to make some friends. Okay. I'm just. <laughs> I, I, I'm. I, I'm not even gonna try to be fancy about it. Like, I, you know what? A, a few years back, I think I've been very, uh, you know, process oriented, very goal driven my whole yeah. life, and and I think that, you know, 32 years old is when I had my first child, like my son, and, uh, you know, that was always the goal. But I, I really, you know, my wife and I chatted about this, and I said, I don't actually think I've ever sat back and said like. Like, what do you want to do? <laughs> and I know people say, like, that sounds weird. What do you mean? But I'm like, no, like, what does Ryan want to do? Because everything for me was like survival, you know, survive, thrive, try to build a business. You know, you're coming from nothing and you don't really get a lot of time to just sit in silence and figure out, like, who the hell am I and what the heck do I want to really do? And people yeah. are like, man, you got a lot of success and all that. But I'm like, it, it, it didn't really mean anything because, well, it did mean something, but it just was like out of survival. And so now it's like, I want to build something with a lot of intention. So when I talk to, you know, people like yourself, I honestly, I try to gauge whether you're real or whether you're fake. And I'm like, if you're real, like I want to pour into you, I want to water some of your grass and, and hopefully build a, a great relationship. So I appreciate you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And I completely understand. I think sometimes I think a lot of people don't stop and say, mm. You get in a cycle or you get in a career or you go to college and like this is what's set before me and you just kind of do what's around you and or what you're good at. Mm. Like, I mean, you've asked yourself what I want. Um, so I think a lot of people don't reflect. And you said reflection comes in silence. Um, talk about challenging. It's mm. really hard to be silent because when you get silent, you're stuck with your thoughts and you have to process. So you know, I, there's a lot to unpack on that too, I think. Well, there was an interview I was watching with, I don't know if you've heard of him, he, Zane Lowe. He's like a like a DJ for Apple Music or whatever. Like he's been in the music scene for a long time. And he's yeah. extremely good at really, I, like, I love the way he talks with his guests because it truly feels like two old friends is chatting. But he said, you know, he got, he kind of got lost a little bit, like, you know, late 30s, early 40s. And he really went into the spiral. And he said, his wife said to him, look, it's time for you to pull over the car figuratively and just stop. Mm -hmm. Just stop. Look around you. Don't make any moves to the right. Don't make any moves to the left. Just stop the car and just be okay with that before you start making your next move, whatever that looks like. And I love, I love analogies because for me, I'm a very practical person. And so I just, like, I heard that. And I was like, damn. And sometimes it hurts to stop the car. Yes. Yeah, now, absolutely. Now, Shannon, you've stopped the car a couple times <laughs> in your journey. So going with this analogy of stopping the car, bring us all the way back to <clears throat> before you even got into the car. Because before Danity Kane, kind of leading up to that, you know, performing, we talked about this a little early. Like you've been performing since you're like little, little. How did you get, like, give us the, the the speeded up version of how the hell you started, you know, going into that audition, making the band, <laughs> and then going into Danity Kane. Like, how did that all come into fruition? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you said it right. I've been performing my whole life. Dancing is my main forte. Um, and then I just gravitated to things I liked to do. 
And that's mm. so easy when you're younger, you know, and or naive, you just keep going down the path of, oh, this is fun. I'm going to keep going. Um, for some reason, that stops when we get older. I don't know why we get overcomplicated with our thoughts. Um, but one thing led to another. I was a professional, you know, dancer for the Portland Trail Blazers NBA team. I started singing the anthem just because my coach heard me singing in the locker room one day. And she's like, oh, you should sing the anthem. And of course, I'm like, sure. I'll see me at them. And then a cover band in the area asked me to join. So I got my chops with a live band and what that was like. Um, and then actually a show on NBC came out called Fame. And it was with Debbie Allen, but it was a mm. triple threat reality show. So American Idol, but it included dancing. Um, so I actually was runner up on that show. It was America Voted. And um, that was the same year I was getting married. So it was a very exciting life moving and everything is before me. Um, but I learned a lot, you know, every, every element, every step makes me learn more of what I'm capable of and or what I do or don't want. Um, and I was actually offered to be part of the pussycat dolls. What? Okay. <laughs> uh, but I turned it down. <laughs> I was with Jimmy Iovine and I actually was like, thanks, but no thanks. You know, I had my little cardigan sweater and I'm like, it's just, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I want to be a country pop star. I wanted to do country, but yeah, yeah. with the, with the performing edge to it, you know? Um, so, but my manager at the time, um, who actually was a, judge on fame uh he ended up going and doing a show called making the band mm. on mtv so i sat at home watching him as a judge on this show and oh. and i was like that's kind of the reality of okay all of this whirlwind all these wonderful things are happening all this opportunity i was kind of waiting on him nothing <laughs> against him but it was my first mm. left the entertainment industry of hey you got to kind of still take action for yourself and not just sit and rely on like other people. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to go audition. So when they were, didn't find the band, they didn't find the group, they did another season. So I flew myself down to San Francisco. I stood in line for seven plus hours. And the first judge I saw, I didn't tell my manager that I was going to do this, was my manager. So I walked <laughs> What? <laughs> and he, he just laugh like he, he had to love you know probably love my gumption that I didn't call him and just be like hey hook me up I was like no fine I'll do this and I'll do it with or without you and I you know my little spunky side that comes out sometimes um and I did and then the whole thing was what we all saw you know on tv and um you know it's funny I like look back at my time as a NBA dancer and having to work with 20 plus other women and and, mm. and just the uh, you know, the emotional roller coaster of just relationships and how to work with people. And I was able to apply that even through the audition process and, and, and so much of how you show up, um, makes your reality what it is. Mm, and so I was, huge. I'm trying to be conscious of, Hey, I, in fact, I think there's a clip of me talking about, we were introducing ourselves and I was like, by the end of this, I'm going to learn something and take a piece of each and every one of you with me. And everyone was like, oh, <laughs> and I'm like, no, I really did. I really sat and became a student, not thinking I knew everything because I didn't. I was a country girl from Oregon, dancer showing up to MTV. Like it just was out of my comfort zone. And that's just kind of another lesson. And one big thing I always go back to is when I went to audition for fame, I was like, you know, I need more lessons. I need more vocal lessons. I need more dance lessons. I need to get better before I try. Um, and my fiance, now husband, mm. at the time was like, hey, I will support you with whatever you want to do. But 20 years from now, are you going to regret whatever decision you make, whether, the, mm. whether doing it? Or not mm. doing it. Mm. And that has stuck with me in so many of my decisions because people are going to come and go in your life. Mm. Situations are going to come and go for you. It feels a bit selfish to just re self reflect like that and just decide what you want to do. But there's so much truth to that. And it really is sobering to just mm. stop the car and be 20 years from now, mm. if I don't try. How am I like, am I going to regret not trying? So yeah, all that to say, hope that was a 
quick recap. What, that, uh, there's so many. La- there's so many layers of that. That first of all, like this is what is really amazing about you is that you really are somebody like people who get a you know I called like that drug of attention. Now back then when you were doing all that, you know, I mean, social media was not prevalent. Like people were literally glued to their televisions, watching you know TV old school. Right now. You know, everything's on, on social and whatnot. But how did you manage? Because I like I, I did my deep dive on you. I mean, I watched lots of interviews, little clips. And you could always tell, like, even some of your other bandmates, like, you were there for really the, like, it just seemed like you were really focused on the artistry of what you were doing and truly happy to be there in the moment. But you always, like, you're not, you're not getting into the controversy. You're not, like, you didn't really seem like you're craving this attention in terms of, like, fame which I find really interesting, but then, you know, pun intended, you still had the balls to really like go after what you wanted. So yeah. I want to know, has this been like an internal battle your whole life of like, well, I want to do crazy things and remarkable things in the world, but I still want to just be like that country girl, but I really want to do remarkable things. And like, but I still just want to like, you know, like you're, you're constantly dipping your toe in and then like dipping it back out. Is this yeah. you? Is this your personality or is this strategy? Like, wh- like, how do you live this way, Shannon? It's certainly not a, a <laughs> strategy. Um, the, the older I get, the more I do realize um, my, my personality and what I can take and handle and what I can't. And I've, mm. I've tried to put guardrails for myself, like during fame is a good one. Oh yeah, we didn't have, my space wasn't even around. And for yeah, all yeah. people, Bless your hearts. We don't know my space. You know? <laughs> oh, so gee, my oh, space. What's up? Yeah. Oh, gee. But we only had forums. So yeah. I remember all the contestants, we shared like this common room at the hotel where we got to hang out, watch TV, but they had to take our phones, our flip phones, not smartphones, our flip phones, because um, we couldn't communicate with the outside. So we all had one computer that sometimes we could get on and look yeah. at the different blogs the forums that were talking about the show so we could see the feedback and i remember one um one comment basically some negative comments about me or how i was a slut and i'm like i'm saving myself for marriage i had no (laughs) you don't know me i was so offended and it was at that moment i started to realize like oh my gosh i'm giving people so much power over my peace and they don't know me they don't know. Ooh. And I can't get mad at them yep. because they don't know me. If they came to hang out for a day, they would know me and they'd probably be like, no, she's totally not. It was just the impulse. But that was before this flood of the way people can bully and interact. And, and yes. sometimes people having a bad day and they're a nice person, but they say the wrong thing. And then it's just, it's not cut and dry is my point. Mm. And I really tried to make a point for myself to not read comments. Have mm. I succeeded? No, but yes. I realized the positive comments, oh, they just make me feel confident and good. And then you keep reading, it's like a drug. Ooh. Yes. And then the negative hits you and you're like, oh my gosh, I need a hit again. So then you keep yeah. reading, you know, and then it's just, yeah. Yeah. Why, what does that do for you? You know, and, and how is that affecting you mentally? and with your confidence. So just being aware of that stuff, I really tried from the beginning mm. kind of put guide rules up for myself. Um, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's no, I mean, it's, you know, it's the dopamine shot. You know, if you're peaceful on the inside, there's really nothing on the outside that can do you any harm. There's a great, there's a great uh, African proverb that states that. Right. And so what you feel on the inside, like uh, people always kind of blame the outside. But the reality is, is that the outside's irrelevant. It's you got to look on the inside because why are you even letting these things, you know, basically precipitate into your soul, right? And you've yeah. managed to keep that that guarded up. However, now I now I find interesting is that when I looked on your Instagram and how mean you even start talking is that's this is a that's a funny story too. Like Le- LinkedIn, what's up? Like LinkedIn is not sexy, but LinkedIn is like LinkedIn is like B two B, you know, like business to business, you know, like. Let's talk about some, you know, balance sheets. Let's talk about some venture capital. Let's talk about some private equity, you know. And then, you know, over the years, this became, you know, you see a lot more personality on there, which I like. But when I, the first thing I, once I found out, I was like, oh, hey, you know, and it was an insight. I'm like, yo, hey, Shannon, great to connect. 
And we started talking. I'm like going through the thing. I'm like, this makes no sense. Like, what's this music stuff? And then you're doing business and startup. Like, what's going on here? And then I'm like, okay, I got to Google this shit. And then I'm like, oh, my God. I used to listen to her music back in the day. So you took me back to like my nostalgia days, like a couple decades ago. And I'm like, okay, great. I'm like, oh, but then I'm like, well, I want to check out her Instagram. And then I'm like, wait, she doesn't do nothing with Instagram in the last little while. It What is, so you, you put the gram on pause uh -huh. and then what, why did you put the gram on pause? Is this stopping the car? Is this, I just uh -huh. don't want to read comments. I just don't want to be a part of that. I don't want my energy going there. Why is the gram on pause, but LinkedIn is in drive? <laughs> and I'm not even that active on the front facing of LinkedIn. I just didn't. true. So um, I think so when I kind of put that on pause was when Vox, my streaming company that for children's story. Yep. Was yep. Launching. And it really did need the right focus. And I was transitioning, you know, just the season of life. Um, yep. And I, I wasn't sure self-reflecting. I wasn't sure how I wanted to continue showing up. Mm. Uh, it was hard for me to kind of put a pause because there's so many people who have been showing up for me through like my social media, mm. but um, I think social media is such a, like, if I, if I didn't know how I was going to bring value, mm. um, I, I felt that was a, almost a pressure I was going to be putting on myself. So mm. I was here for me to just pause, mm. reflect, decide how is the shift look because I've been showing up so, as my artist self for so long. Yes. Um, what that even look like now for me as a ooh. business. So ooh. I haven't ooh. That out yet. <laughs> ooh, ooh. So, okay. So, okay. Let me ask you this. Cause this is, man, this is, you go into the business world or, you know, if you're putting out any content or you're, you know, podcasting or you're creating a show, even music, you're putting out a certain genre. Genre can also be used as, you know, what's your niche, right? Like, are you seeing country? Are you sipping? See? So this is something that I struggled with for many years in my entrepreneur journey was Ryan, like, you know, damn, I, I, I'm known as marketing and branding, but I don't want to just be known as marketing branding. I love true crime. I love food i love pop culture i love all these different things but I, you know so yeah and so i'm like <laughs> but what's my niche how do yeah. i pick a niche and yeah. if i if i enter into somebody's world through business oh my mm -hmm. god maybe i shouldn't talk about being a dad or i shouldn't talk about being a human being mm -hmm. and then it this became like this big thing for me and then i usually handle these kind of things where i'm just like if something becomes something like if it becomes so confusing and so like negative for me in my world, I literally will take a bomb and I'll just throw it on it. I'm like, I'm going to explode this whole shit up. Fuck this. <laughs> I'm out. And I'm going to wrap around it. And then I'm going to really dissect what's going on here. And so I said, you don't have to be, or you can be. And so in you saying, Hey, I've been showing up to the world as an artist, but I have a ton of other things going on on the side. Do you think that, was a little bit of why you said, well, let's put this on pause because I don't know how I want to show up. What I is the niche so. for you? I, I think I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, I I desire to bring joy. I desire to help people feel fulfilled and pour into people. Um, and I know, you know, they say you're most likely, you're best suited to serve who you once were. I once were a lot of different things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't yes. really know what it would be for me. Um, and then sometimes it's just put stepping out and one step at a time. You know, I understand that. But for me, I did need kind of a delineation moment. Um, otherwise, maybe habitual, you know, habits would have just kept things running not correctly for me. Like, I think the pressure we have nowadays on, oh, your personal brand, like you said, mm -hmm, who you are. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. pretty it's like almost too pressured. It's like, mm. we're so multifaceted. Why, why do we feel like we have to be one thing or the other? So mm. again, I, but I do understand messaging things the right way. I do understand the importance of getting something across. So it's not confusing. Um, plus I think I really wanted to give myself a sit in silence moment. Mm. To be okay. To explore, lean into this other facet of myself, which is, business um and what that could even look like shannon you know, would 
Shannon, would you would you uh, be against me gently suggesting that you are your niche? Ooh. Because and what I mean by that is um, and I literally I do this for a living on a daily basis for people. And so when we have these conversations of like self-discovery and kind of what your goals and mandate are going in the future and also paying homage to the past and then bringing some of those nuances into the future. The reality is that you are your world. And that's why our slogan is you are one one because it's like, even if like I came on your radar and so you, you, you brought up a word saying burden, you know, Hey, look this, I feel a little pressure of if I'm posting and I'm doing all these different things, you know, people have this expectation and I want to make sure that I'm serving them well. Well, think about how many people are feeling that like confusion. And so to have Shannon come out and say, hey, I'm confused with you. Like I'm literally working through this in real time. Those people look at you like, oh, damn, I needed to hear that. You just helped me move that pedal forward. And that's where we come to the authenticity. Like people are always trying to show up as their Photoshop selves. I'm not saying you're doing that. But oh, yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people try to show up as their Photoshop selves and they have this mask on, but you see these people that truly have a massive impact in the world and, and they all share the same thing. They're truly authentically themselves, mm -hmm. right? Even for me, if I do a keynote speech, I literally open up my talk and I, I don't say, hi, my name's Ryan and nobody gives a fuck. I open my speech up by simply saying, I want at the end of my talk for half this room to absolutely fucking hate me. I want the other half to love me. But if I leave this room and nobody remembers me, I have failed not only you, but I failed myself and the people that put on this conference. The end, mic drop. Because people who are sitting in the audience are like, you know, people are like, oh, another speaker coming. Okay, let's see. Oh, oh. What, what the fuck did this guy just say? Oh shit, you got my attention. Oh, hey, hello. Yeah. Right. So I'm not here to be liked in the world. I want to be known. Right. I'm not here to be liked because if I'm just like if somebody always says, oh, my God, I like that person. Either that person's being fake or they're not doing big enough shit so that you can get some haters. Haters are a badge of honor when it comes to climbing that success ladder. So, yes, when I get 100 great comments, they're like, Ryan, you're great. I'm like, oh, thank you so much. My seven-year-old son says attitude is gratitude, and I am so grateful. But then when that negative one comes in, I'm like, you motherfucker. Like, deep down, I'm like, what the fuck? It could even be Joe69 at gmail.com. I'm going to be honest. I'm a human. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> what is that? What is that comment? And then I'm like, okay, wait a sec, Ryan, relax, relax. You know, he doesn't even know you. But it still bugs me. But I'm like, wait a sec. I might be on to something here. Like, I, I'll keep going. Keep going. Oh, yeah, because you're hitting a court. You're striking a court, good or bad. Ooh. Right? So uh -huh. what do you think? Oof. A lot. Oof. That's a lot. That's a That's lot. So good, I, but Shannon, I'll tell you, I came for you today. I, I came here. Oh. I showed up for you today. Mm -hmm. I am all about my day. Like, what is it? Today is what? The, November 30th in my land is going to be called Shannon Beck's Basada Day. It is the day oh, yeah. that we talked. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna send you a cal. I'm gonna send you a text every day on the 30th. Be You're like, me yo, Shannon. I'm, I'm just, <laughs> no, because no, because uh, you're a phenomenal person, and people like the world needs you. They truly do, and I'm I'm serious about that because we got darkness in the world, and we got light. And when and I always tell people like, in the midst of darkness, if you're somebody that has light, please shine brighter. You know, if and I give the analogy. When we walk into a room in our homes and it's dark, what's the first thing we look for? The light switch. You're that light switch for many people. Thanks. That is, and that is a burden. <laughs> no, it, it it is, it is, yeah. And and part of me, as I reflect with everything you're saying, it so resonates. Is you know, I sometimes wonder. I've been a trained, I started ballet. I've been a trained, mm. disciplined dancer that has my steps aligned, I can perform. So I always, it's funny, I have like a life coach that I work with. And, and one of the top things I wrote down was break up with performance. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. 
I feel like, okay, what, how does this audience, how does this person, how does this friend, how does this family member need me to show up? There's validity there. I think we do need to be conscious of how someone or people in our lives do need us to show up. But what is the intention of you trying to show up like that? Are you, mm. am I just performing, um, mm. not being fake, it's genuine, but is there a, is there a performance element that I need to break up with and just stop? <laughs> mm. I can't make every audience member enjoy my performance. I can't make every, so I don't know what that is. That's self-reflection for me, but, but I wonder if that's part of my conditioning that I need to just stop, <laughs> just stop. Break up with the woman, yeah. you know, don't try to be perfect for everyone. You just got to show up as yeah. you are. But. I think you double down, though, because if you say, hey, I'm breaking up with performance, the reality, again, is you're saying I'm right. And so I always say, like, ego can play a really interesting thing because people always think ego is like they take it in a negative way. It's not everybody has an ego like it's, yeah. you know, neurologically proven. Um. But I always say to somebody, is your ego going to get in the way of you serving the people that truly need you and the way you serve them? Because the reality is that there's going to be people that say, hey, Shannon, I want you to serve me. But those aren't your true customers. Those are your mm -hmm. actual, those, so, sometimes those are pawns in your life that are put there by not good forces just to throw you off of your own solitude in, in, with self. But then there's other people that are like, no. Shannon's my girl. I need her to serve me in the way that only she knows how to serve me because she's truly serving from her authentic self. Yeah. Right. And so that's when you say, Hey, I'm breaking up with performance, but damn, does it feel good? Cause I'm not really putting on an act. This is just who I am. If you were to not have me on a camera or a mic and you were to talk to me, this is how I would talk. If you were to run into me at a grocery store, this is how it would be. It's it, yeah. there's an effortless. And that's where I, I think that burden disappears. Yeah. Oh, that's so valid. That's really right. True. So you bring up life coaching, for example. Right. And so for me, <clears throat> this is interesting. So what I guess I'll ask, how did you get a life coach? Like, how did that come on your radar? <laughs> that was actually when I was <laughs> struggling with I am a performer. I'm an artist. I'm a singer. This it was my identity because that's what I did. And that's what I knew how to do. But I was just desiring and, and 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 wondering how how can I have the voice to kind of start maneuvering away without disappointing people around me but I have I, I have to make this shift for my soul it was yeah. not even an option. I just yes. had put their burden and a calling and a desire and and it wasn't instantaneous it was a few year process um but it just was kind of that self-reflection and mm. and I've, I've again always been trying not to be the selfish one trying not to be the one that does something i want to do because i want to do it i, I just mm. felt like that was a selfish thing but there's an element to that that's not you have to be mm. you, you have to be on your own journey you know yes yes so I, I yes think life coach kind of career coach just it's not like they tell you what to do that's the beauty no. of it you know, no. they, they just put you in the exercises and, and thoughts to think about and and ways to handle some maybe situations. And, you know, saying no is saying yes to yourself was one of the biggest mm. like moments for me. And this was with my career, but it even served me in my personal life, too. Um, and mm. yeah, so I think it was when I was not think I know it was when I was trying to understand how to handle um, that transition for myself and for my career and then yeah well it's funny because we uh, for example right i i coach a lot of uh primarily females and they're all high achievers and so we talk a lot about masculine energy versus mm -hmm. feminine energy and so i often tell my clients look i'm not the coach you want i'm the coach that's gonna you know rip your soul out and not everybody's okay with that right and so we say hey like we're gonna give a, you a booty lift for your mind because a lot of people that are trying to alter their appearances or doing injections, Botox, whatever it is, it, you know, you, it always comes down to the question, like, why are you doing this? You know? And so once we start going there, we always know like our whole body is like connected to the spirit and connected to the mind. 
Like the most powerful thing is between those two ears. It's unbelievable, right? Would you say you live in your feminine energy or your masculine energy? Um, most of my day to day is my feminine energy. Mm. And the way I would define feminine energy is just intuitive, mm. very simple, um, aware, um, slow to speak. Mm. Ooh. meek and meek is not weak meek is just knowing Ooh. like knowing when to show up and when not um yeah damn when you performed because yeah. you got that you got that beast in you you got that silent savage servant going on in you were you was that mad was that masculine was that yeah. feminine or was that a hybrid Hands down, uh, hybrid, but leaning masculine. Oh, yeah. Authoritative. Oh. Confident. Um, yes. Yeah, just bold. Um, Because would you say yeah. you're like, grow, like growing up, if we're if you're going to school and, and I pull out like some of your high school classmates or something, I'm like, yeah. yo, is Shannon a badass? Was she like the nerdy person? Was she the, the goody girl? Was she like the person that's like, oh, my God, the world's so beautiful and it's a blossom. Like, who who the... Who the hell would they say Shannon was back then in high school? I think um, that's funny. I think my close friends are just the observers from a, from more afar. No, the people that know you. Um, a blend of feminine, masculine. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, and then because you were, I'm assuming you're athletic too. You're very athletic. Were you athletic in high school? Like, did you do um, the sports stuff I and whatnot? Did you track, but I, mm. I. I leaned into dance, dance team. Yeah. Um, yeah. And our, our coach during high school actually quit on us. And I was a sophomore. And so my mom, she had some experience in performance. So she just stepped in to be the mediator. But I ended up being the choreographer and really teaching my peers. Yeah. Um, so I was able to um, be humble enough to where I'm like not lording this over you you're a senior I'm a sophomore I'm telling you what to do so mm -hmm. I was able to find how to work with the dynamics of that situation mm -hmm. while also running a class and making them do push-ups making them do sit up like mm -hmm. running through rigorous coaching like routines but at the end of the day when we walked out of that gym and practice I was Shannon. I wasn't trying to lord anything over them. So I think that's mm. a lot of the complexities that a lot of people would say that I was able to accomplish. So you, so you're on a basketball team. You got, you got Michael Jordan yeah. or you heard of Scottie Pippen, right? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. He was on Blazers and I danced for them. Oh there, yes. Yes. Are you Michael Jordan or are you Scottie Pippen? Cause you uh, know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Damn, that's not okay. aware. And I'm yes. okay with Scotty. I know Scotty was a little challenged being Scotty sometimes, but <laughs> <laughs> facts, facts, yes, yes. I, I'm really okay. I am okay supporting you to make you shine, and um, that can be to that personality like that your own detriment because that sometimes you have to you have to reflect and be like hey am i at least serving myself to my fullest potential or am mm. i depleting myself in order to help this other person so it's like finding that balance of fulfilling your own so that you can help mm. continue to fulfill the, the others but yeah i'm i don't mind being in the back row of a dance mm. at a center well you go you you might like so do you i mean in all intents and purposes do you like to be led or do you like to guide? You know what I mean? Like, do you like to be led or do you like to be guide, guided? I like to know what's expected. So okay. to the degree of being led of give me the expectation so I know the path. But Got I don't it. mind guiding. But I, won't, I, I have a hard time guiding if you're not uh, being clear with expectations. So it's, mm. it's, yeah, it's kind of a little bit of both. I do look for instruction, but I don't mind leading. Your last three text message conversations, who asked more questions in those text conversations? Uh, others. <laughs> ah, yeah. That's interesting. Okay. That's a good observation and question. 100%, because we're, uh, I'm here for you today, Shannon. You think I'm joking? You think I just woke up off the couch and said, 
We're going to just talk to you? Right? You know what I'm saying? Look, I look, because this is like, this is so beneficial, number one, for for my audience to to hear. And number two, I'm learning. It's beneficial for myself. Um, But yeah, so you have the last three text conversations. Those people are asking you more questions than you're asking them. Yeah. Now, if you say that out loud and pretend like you're not there in it, how would you perceive that? Um, usually people ask leaders questions or the decision maker of the questions in my mind, like mm. it, kind of with you. it starts with you. What are your thoughts on this or what can you, yeah. Ooh. So, so, you, so then a leader, <laughs> when they receive that question, you feel that they would just respond. But let's say that I was a leader that was a servant leader, meaning that person asked me a question I innately for me, when somebody asks me a question, obviously not every question, because some are just like, you know, what's your favorite color? Like, who cares? But I'm like, wait a sec. And if we t- look at the Chris Voss, you heard of him, the FBI negotiator, never split the difference. No oriented yeah. questions. You know, somebody asked me a question. I say, it seems like you got a reason for asking that, because oftentimes when people ask a question, that's not the question or the right question they wanted to ask. It's what they thought of before that question. That maybe will lead them. Correct. Because most times when people are asking a question, either they are fearful, their fear of judgment, they lack confidence, or they're just like, Oh my God, if I ask this person, this question, are they going to be offended? What will they think of me? Right. Whereas, I mean, the true conversation comes with like this interview will suck ass. If I only ask bullshit questions, yes, but if I ask, but if you don't, hundred <laughs> percent, it's gonna sound like every other interview, right? Yes. Where it's like I want my I want my audience to actually get to know Shannon a little bit, and, and so in order for the, you know that to happen, you and I have to become friends, right? Yeah. 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 So, do you yeah. think? Do you ever ask yourself why this person asked me this question, or you just simply answer and then move on? Um, that's interesting. I'm trying to think of like the different types of questions. I, I tend to actually, it's funny, not always give answers unless it's a direct, flat, obvious answer. Yeah. yeah. Like you you hold, you hold, you hold those cards close. Oh yeah. You poker yeah. player. Uh-uh. I, uh, don't come, don't come to Shannon playing checkers. She plays chess. Four dimension. Oh, Honor, Honor. <laughs> I know you do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, and you and you're sneaky. You're a sneaky person. Holy, <laughs> you're, you're you're like yo. I know a lot about you, but I'm gonna let you talk first because oh, okay, yeah, okay. I want to get that intel. Okay, what I do do is if someone's asked me a certain question, I sometimes will ask them a back a question back because I want either mm. them to understand it or discover it, or maybe there's a different way. Like you said, like help guide their mm. desire of their question in a better way. Like I, I always ask the find the why question or understand Ooh, more. Okay. And I don't like to do it just for myself, but I really like the other person to do it too. Like when my consultant work for, for business, I do the same type of thing. Client comes with a project or yep. a desired product they want. Okay. Why, why do you want this product? What is it about this product that is going to serve your initiatives and step them through the why so that they can better understand it. And it's more transformational versus 100%. transactional. So yes. that's kind of how I know. Well, it's, if you notice too in relationships, because we're, uh, you know, I feel like, especially with business and our audience, you know, lots of entrepreneurs, business people thinking about business or, you know, extremely doing, you know, doing extremely well in business, relationships are, are so massive. And especially if you're somebody starting out, it's like, well, how do you build relationships with those that are, you know, 15, 20 years ahead? And well, so I, I think that, communication is is kind of everything. And so what I've learned in mine is if you really want to get to know somebody, even if you're extremely charismatic and very good on the brain, you can get a lot of information from somebody and get into that place. But what I realize is that when you get to, into that place of that person, if that person's not ready to go there, even though they already did, they will ghost you because it's almost like there's a feeling of violation to a degree. Like, oh my God, I shared all that information. So you as the person like kind of initiating has to be very cautious of, I guess, how far you're going. Mm -hmm. That is so true. Yeah. Right. 
It's a really so, small. So there's an article about you, and you were. It was it was like going from Danny D. Kane to pitching VCs type deal. Now I want to know when you're pitching VCs, mm -hmm. do you ever like want to just throw your computer across the room and say, I just want to fucking go perform and pick up a microphone? Like, why am I fucking doing all this uh EBITDA bullshit? Like, like do you ever do you ever fight with yourself on a daily basis when you're doing these like deep, I call them deep work tasks? Uh no, I enjoy them. Mm -hmm. And I actually see there's a lot of parallels of performance and the discipline and the stage. Ooh. And so if you don't know your steps, you don't know your choreography, you probably will mess up on that stage. So <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That rehearsal, that discipline, the knowledge, um, you know, just like dance, you learn ballet, you have vocabulary, you learn jazz, you have vocabulary. It's all similar, but this vocabulary that's specific to that style. Same with business. You have to learn the vocabulary. So when the questions mm. are asked and what they're asking, it's mm. really not rocket science. It's really mm. not. It's mm. storytelling. It's engaging. It's a bit of a performance. It's being able to pivot quickly if you need mm. to, if you'll read the room. If you're dancing and performing and you can read the audience, it's just not clicking, you got to be able to like pivot and do something, say something, pull up a different song to re-engage them. And the same goes for pitching and a business proposal. Mm. Right? It's knowing your audience and how, what's going to be important to them, what they want to get out of it. So mm. it's really been interesting for me to see it almost the dancer performer journey and mm. paralleling with business and, and this C-suite it's, it's, Ooh. I don't know. It's interesting. So we have people listening right now that are either seeking out financing, going out the venture capital or thinking about, Hey, I want to, you know, how I want to invest. Right. And so we've had, we have CBC, we have a dragon's den show. That's the American version of shark tank here in Canada, oh. but we've had dragons on and we've also had sharks from shark tank on the show. And so we, you know, I always like to ask like, what's, what makes a great pitch, but given our analogies of stopping the car, talking to Shannon, take us through a dance of how Shannon approaches mm -hmm. a VC. Take, mm -hmm. Like, let's go step one idea. Like, what are we doing here? Like, are you in sweatpants, eating ice cream, thinking like, holy fuck, I know your husband's a choreographer, so that's going to help. You guys can dance on the spot and think about it together. Like, how the hell do we go from like, damn, honey, we got to go. We, we got to go after that company. That's the one. I think they're right for our, we got a, we got a solution to their problem. How does that happen? Uh, I think know your audience, first of all, because yes, they're all trying to get a return on their investment, but understanding where their interests lie first, should you even be having a meeting? Don't just take, I mean, you can take meetings to learn from them and just realize just like any audition, you're probably going to have Let's look, let's look, let's even rewind further back though. Yeah. I don't yeah. even know, I don't even know where to find these contacts. I don't even know where to find this meeting. How do I even get the meeting? Yeah, well, you got to have the idea first. Yep, yep. Okay. <laughs> and you got to have a pretty bulletproof idea, but you have to, I think, be flexible enough to receive feedback, just like it, choreographing a dance. If if it's not hitting, if it's not striking, Ooh. something feeling clunky or jarring, then revisit it. Don't be so married to your idea that you can't be flexible in, in the needs of, you know, whatever industry you're pitching towards. And... You know, we'd like to think we can all be experts in an industry, but we're not going to be. It, it's yep. really, you can do, do your best to understand it because if you mm. don't understand the market and you're trying to pitch into a market, you're going to mess up from day one. So mm. know your market, know what your product is, have a really solid, um, not just vision of it, but I, I've i experienced too, a lot of times they investors do invest in the person. Um, mm. it's, these projections and, and these calculations, I mean, you can squeeze data and cut data and, and numbers to kind of say whatever you wanted to say. Of and course. the most farming person can sell an idea and, you know, most likely get funding. It's just, it, it is a bit of a performance and, and understanding how to like craft. It's a craft. Yeah. But you know what you're, you know what you're describing to me right now? Seduction. Mm -hmm. Money wants to be seduced, Shannon. We mm -hmm. want to, we want to tell it, Hey, come on over here. I'm going to give you a safe home. I'm going to make you a nice dinner. I want you to relax. 
But I want you, but when you got that rest, I want you to go back out. I want you to make, I want you to compound yourself. I want you to make more of you. And then I want you to come back home and we're going to have a couple homes. And then we're going (laughs) to distribute you throughout a couple different homes. And don't worry. (laughs) That's a really good point. Be self-aware of your why and why are you building this product? Are you trying to create a unicorn company that's just going to, turn and burn in the next year and like then you'll go you know go buy a island and retire like because also you don't necessarily have you know, your desire for your product or what you're trying to launch might truly be genuine to solve someone's problem and a mm-hmm. annual income of gross income of 500,000 will be sufficient enough for what you want you know like what is your why behind this if you're trying mm. to just get rich quick then you probably shouldn't even walk through these doors and or there's some other VCs you can talk to but mm. it, it's, it's really intentional too like what is your intention mm. um yes however, however i will say it's not like wooey you can't just feel good and walk into a pitch and have these money men and women yes um, want to invest because they need a return on their investment so it's, it's a lot of a combination of self-awareness your why product market fit um Ooh. i think naturally when you're exploring product market fit, you're going to start listening to podcasts. You're going to start following people. You're going to start probably messaging or DMing. Like there's this natural environment you're going to start circulating in Mm. um, if if you're doing your homework. And, you know, there's going to be people that will naturally gravitate to you or you go to those events or you do those networking Mm. things. Um, You have to have your ear to the ground and listen Mm. and see who's doing what, where things are moving um, and be out there like you have to put yourself out there enough to go try just like an audition just like standing mm. in line to go for fame mm. for 11 hours i went to where the opportunity was mm. um and you're mm. only gonna learn from all of that so yeah Ooh. what's your relationship with money because we there's all these shows that are like hey we're gonna talk to millionaire women and all these things and I, we had a we had a lady on a girl on out of miami and she's known as the booty queen but she her story you know rags to riches all this stuff but she said, Ryan, I my financial um, philosophy is biblical. I got six accounts. Like she's like, yo, I ain't gonna go buy no car unless I got three times that money. I don't use, you know, I don't, I don't spend on credit cards. That and this is something she got. She got more than enough money, but her financial principles were so. When I asked her the question, it was impressive because her answer was just so like tic tac toe. Do you think about money? Do you, do you have you had a good relationship with money? Have you not had a good relationship with money? Like, how do you yeah. seduce it, Shannon? How do you seduce it? <laughs> I'm I'm money. Come on. I've been trying to be its friend. Maybe I need to handle it differently. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, I I live in a small town. I've I'm on ten acres. This has always been my desire of like my why. Like at the end of my journey, my career. Where do I want to be? Where do I want to end up? Like, where do I want my roots for my soul and my purpose? Like, mm. that was the vision for me. Mm. I I don't, I can't even see my neighbor. I, I'm not keeping up mm. with the junk. I don't need them to mm. see the car I drive in with. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. Some people, like, literally just love cars and are obsessed. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Um, I love, my husband gets embarrassed when I say this. I love shopping for a good deal. I love going to confinement stores and finding unique finds that are like, that gets me all jazz. So ooh, ooh. I'm not, I, I have never really been one to keep up with fashion. I, I just laugh. My husband actually dresses me and um, I love it because I don't need to think about it. Um, mm. I, I think I've probably in the beginning of my career and it's nobody's fault, but artists tend to have an unhealthy relationship with money because it is scarce. It's almost like a consulting, you know, the feast and famine. Yes. Yes. Feasting for three months and famine for 12. And so I kind of, for a while had this conditioning of that's just what it is. And and consistency doesn't exist and you got to deal with it and pay Mm. your dues. And it's unfortunate, like my heart does go out for creatives because that's not fair. Like you can't be working a nine to five job and then go on tour for three months. You know, it just, it, it just, <laughs> it, you know. There's no- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I was desiring more consistency too. It's like, let's just get consistent. Like I need to wake up and know where I'm going to go. Um, so for me, I definitely have been 
a condition just because of my career path, especially, you know, I'm talking even before when I was in Blazers, like just career path period as a creative and artist theater yeah. and a ballerina, but I knew there was no pay in being a mm. professional ballerina. And I knew my knees were going to give out on me around 24, 25. And then what was I going to do? <laughs> so I wow. exited the ballerina dream. Um, so yeah, so relationship with money, Healthy, yes, both of my cars are paid off. Um, I'm not gonna lie, my husband's really excited and wants a cyber truck. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> um yeah. but yeah, I just I'm okay. Like um oh, uh, that I I I love I love that. And you know what you know what though, creative artist entrepreneurship. I mean, a lot of you know, if you work nine to five, you know, there's that quote that they say, look, you know, companies pay you a salary to forget your dreams, right? In oh, some respect, right, right. Companies pay you a salary to forget your dreams, right? They they show you that, hey, you know what? In two weeks you're gonna make this. In two weeks you're gonna make this. And there's that level of consistency, right? But it's it's one of the riskiest things you can do with your soul. However, mm-hmm. most people they 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 get indoctrined into the system, which is you know go buy all of your stuff, buy your homes, buy your cars. You got all. The, most people they don't have it paid off. They got you know they're paying payments. They they they're paying interest on their credit cards. And they have to work that job because they're just trying to make their minimum payments, right? I'm n- I never subscribe to that at all. Um, but I think that again, I go back to that. Hey, they pay you a salary to forget your dreams. That's why you see a lot of miserable people in corporate or people, you know, desperately trying to exit that. For you, VC, I mean, entrepreneurship is not easy. I mean, I've lived an entrepreneurship life my whole life, and you know, did not know I was weird. Until you wake up one day thinking you are really fucking weird because you're an anomaly. Um, but I tell all the time, I'm like, there's some years I make all my money in three months, four months, and there won't be anything for eight months. But I always know that, look, there's rainy days. You know, there's, you know, you got to make sure that you got money for this, this and this. Like, I've always thought of money that way where I'm like, money is truly a tool and scared money doesn't make money. And so for me, you know, money and I, money has no soul, but I still try to seduce it, right? And so I have that abundance my, my mindset where, you yeah. know, but I, I just think I never fell in love with money for the sense of the material it could buy. It was more so the opportunities and the compound yeah. off of it, which is why I love real estate, right? Yeah. And so, you know, but most people, they're they're just trying to buy the next piece of shit that they don't need to impress somebody they don't even fucking like. <clears throat> well, and sometimes it's like, okay, and I don't, you know, everyone has so many dynamic differences, but when I when like, I've been in the world of, you know, fashion and like the next mm-hmm. and this and that. Yes. That meant, you probably could save up and, you know, put money down on a home or like, is yes. that what is important to you? Was the now here in like Instagram, I'm, you know, fashion forward, like what is, it's okay. And there's nothing wrong with either answer, but mm-hmm. it's just as long as you are just clear on your why and your end outcome in life and where you want your journey to lead, go, you know, use money as a tool, however you want. But just for me personally, I'm like, I'm good. Like I know what I wanted it to be for me. Um, so. And do you know the only thing, honestly, I have to say that would come up against money in terms of compound interest? Like literally, if you have none of it, what would almost be as good as having money? And people, again, they're scared of this, creating content. People are like, what do you mean, Ryan? I'm like, creating content is like equity you put into a home that gives you a return month after month, year after year, right? I tell people all the time, create a podcast. We create podcasts for, for people and companies. And I'm like, listen, even if you don't, I'm not saying you want to be Joe Rogan. I'm not even saying you want to be famous or anything. But the fact that you create your your show and it's now depositing into your savings marketing branding account residually over and over and over, it's the best thing you possibly can do. And they're like, what? I'm like, because content, like it's your business card, right? But you get to actually display it in a way that people don't want to slam the door on your face because you're trying to pitch them some garbage, right? And let's talk about relationship capital. Mm. The conversation is different if I say, hi, Shannon on LinkedIn, I want to sell you some shit. (laughs) Or, hi, Shannon, I would love to have a conversation about all the amazing things you've done in your life. 
and I would like some lessons for our audience. How does that sound? Intriguing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so let's go. I Working with Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, Diddy, like how hard is that to work under him? Like the work ethic, like how was that? What, what was that experience like? And were you, did you ever feel like you, you got starstruck? Did you ever have a little bit of that starstruckness about you? I still get nervous with anyone who's had any, I mean, a dance studio owner, I get starstruck because the, the grind, I know they've been on. It's just, I just have utmost respect for people, you know, I just, yeah, I, I, I could I say it's just star related? No, not necessarily. Yes. But there's a magnitude for sure. And gosh, yeah, this industry, I, I don't even know if it was particularly the one person, really. This this industry mm. in and of itself, no matter what path I took, no matter what label I signed to, um, absolutely would have taught me the grind and hard work. And it, I've seen a lot of artists who are just so, I mean, artists are passionate and they're heart filled mm. and put their, their artistry on their sleeve and it's a business. And if they don't have a, a heart also for the business side, it can crush them. Mm. Uh, and you know that's why a lot of talented people we see don't succeed because of this industry <laughs> and that's corporate too though so I, I feel like yeah the grind definitely prepared me for work ethic and grind in in what i'm doing now with business um absolutely mm. absolutely now did diddy though hard to work for crazy work ethic um crazy work ethic uh Hard to work for. I I shouldn't say work for, but I guess I mean kind of under. I don't know. I how. mean, everyone saw the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of emotions, and for me personally, I think so many of my uh, emotion felt moments was being away even from home, and just that push and pull mm. of, hey, this is my dream, and I want to be here, and um, this is a it's challenging, you know, and mm. that was, my, I think that was my biggest difficulty is being home thick and being away from those I love. But then that also prepared me for the, for touring and for being gone mm. for four months out of the year, not even being able to see my husband. So, um, my emotional toll, I think was heavier in feeling like my professional life was separating me from my personal life. Um, mm. And I wanted them to be better combined mm, as yes. well as a performer. Integrated, I, yeah. I couldn't get it integrated. Yeah. So for me, my biggest struggle was uh, that push and pull of not being able to have them work side by side. And that was pretty much through a lot of most of my career, all of my career, really. So I think that was part of also my transition out of music was like, I got to. I got to get more of my, my consistency of <laughs> my career, my life having. I want to ask, I want to ask a selfish question of you. So you, okay. Your bandmate, she said this in an interview, Aubrey O'Day. She said this, she said, basically music nowadays is not like if you release an album, it's not so much of a collective anymore. It's more of a singles game. So mm -hmm. she said with TikTok and all these things, do you think now if you're releasing an album or music, I mean, number one, it's like, what would you tell your younger self that you know now? Would there be anything specific that you would say, oh, my God, all the experience I have now, what would I tell my, you know, making the band, you know, Shannon or MTV, like anything like that? Would you tell your younger self anything? Yeah, no, she's not wrong. Um, and, and the climate of the music industry has changed significantly. Mm. And when we launched our album, Physical Sales, you were still going down to buy the physical CD. Yes. Um, physical sales were still happening, but yes. it was also struggling um, because of Napster and streaming started <laughs> launching. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful, ugly head. Um, and it took 15 <laughs> years, really, for the music industry to find a rhythm and start to understand how to even digest and then turn this back around. So she's not wrong. And, and I think, um, how, what do I pull myself? I don't know. Cause it, like now, like I said, it's different than when we started. Mm. Uh, 
And I really did try to understand the inner workings of how the business worked and how rights worked. Um, I, I think maybe um, I would have told myself to be a little bit more aware of the way the tides were changing, like mm. not, let the, not just let the train run, but actually understand the why, because mm foresight of Spotify and the foresight of where streaming could go. We, I wasn't necessarily keeping my pulse on that information. Mm. I was just so wrapped up in being an mm. artist at the time. If I could have pulled myself out a little bit and had a better understanding of those conversations. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, like <laughs> right now I'm still reading stuff like this. I just got the 11th edition. I, I think really, I just, oh. I just still okay. like college and feed my brain, but but you're um, dipping your toe in. No, I just the toe the toes at the water. To be fair, I get asked a lot of questions, obviously, as yeah. previous artists, but just like any in industry, things constantly shift and change. And so I don't want to be telling you what I think it is. I want to know that I know when I'm mm. sharing insight or mm. wisdom. And things have changed. And it'd be ignorant yeah. of me to think I was an artist. My last tour was in 2019. And yep. then before that, like, it'd be ignorant for me to give advice yep. to dancers I teach or the kids I run into or even my nieces and nephews who maybe mm. want to be seen. It'd be ignorant for me to, like, just speak to them on my past experience. I can give them validity mm. and, like, wisdom from that, but application of what to do now, if I'm not up to date on it, then I don't have the right to speak to how how to are you, are you are, do you think you're going to come out to the public facing more and create content and share message <laughs> or do you think so have you if thought you about have, it though like even podcasting for example that's that's a great medium yeah i you know yes <laughs> i've thought about but you, it you must get okay but you must get hit up i mean you must get hit up for podcast interviews and stuff right like do, do you not Occasionally, they've been more business focused. My most of the podcasts I've been talking to. Yeah. But doesn't there doesn't that? But is is that because of you though? Um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm just not out there enough to be accessible, or maybe people don't know to find me on LinkedIn. <laughs> well, okay. I I mean that's crazy to me. Okay, but if you look at. Cause are you your bandmates? Like, are you guys? You know, are you close anymore or separate lives? Like, do you guys communicate or? Oh yeah, I mean, we communicate, but it's it's always kind of been the, the separate lives too because we oh. were different women, five different stages of life. I was like the only married one. Everyone lived in different areas, so <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, we weren't like a, some of the bands that you see out there have been a group and. And you know we were competitors to start with, so the, the 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 accomplishments we've made by such a dynamic group is amazing. Yes. And and but everyone still has their own path and journey in life, and then plus you know transitions of life <laughs> like mine. But because I, I I look at I look at Aubrey and what she's doing, and then I look at you, and then I'm like, you're doing you guys are doing completely different things. It seems right, and it's interesting to it's see that. that that kind of break the break off. Right. And so even though you're a group and you kind of come back holistically as what you guys did together, you know, you, it's like, it's interesting. I just find like not running from the light, but like you are just like, no, I'm going to the other side here. Like I am going intrinsically internally and doing my life that way. And I, I, I bring this up because I think that when we, especially when we look at like young girls, even coming up, or, and not in the entertainment business, just in general, like you see all this online bullying and all these, you know, body dysmorphia things and all this stuff that, you know, even when you were like that age, there's no social media like that, you know? Oh, and yes, you, you took a lot of heckles and all that stuff from like what you were doing as an artist, but it's like, you didn't have to come back home to Facebook and Instagram to hear about all the negativity. So our audience has a great, healthy, we have a lot of females and they listen. And so I say, well, you have a female that says, okay, let's go down the path of trying to get as much attention as possible. And then we have another female. It's like, yeah, it's not really my kind of vibe. Um, I want to focus more on the artistry, but I think what's interesting is the, the people that do go down the path of like attention seeking, 
maybe their why is in question. Like maybe it's not for the good reason. This is why you see kind of this, I don't know, it's like a little unhealthiness to that. I think that's, you kind of bridge that gap. And I think you can speak to that for those women and people that are saying like, okay, society is telling me to get the attention, but maybe this is just not who I am. And that is the core of my journey of what is your why? One person's why doesn't make the other person's why wrong. That's why Corey and I were a beautiful duo. We would say all the time, we're the yin and yang. But we both found the beauty in how each other did what each other did. There's Mm. beauty. And Mm. I think we do ourselves a disservice when we try to find one is wrong, one is right. 100%. Um, You can only do you. And if you're doing you because of someone else's opinion, then you're not doing you. So it gets very complicated. (laughs) But I, I think... I think sometimes to when we're trying to self-reflect, we gather information. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I think this is right. I think this is wrong. What's my compass? I think maybe that's why we have these conversations to then better understand our own why. But it really is getting quiet. It's really pulling over the car. It's really... Mm. It's here is the peace, not just peace as in calm, but the pieces and the peace you got to reflect on. Mm. And at the end of your journey in 20 years, whatever you're doing right now, what does that mean for you in 20 years? Is it because of someone else? Or is it because yes. Of you? Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's interesting. I, I do like to share some of my story. Cause I think, first of all, I think it opens up guests a little more because then it, I don't like Q&A. Q&A is kind of so cold. It's like, I ask a question, you answer. But for me, my whole life's mandate was to make as much money as I could <laughs> when I was younger because I had none. I wanted all this fancy stuff and I did it. And then there was this like coldness about it because I knew the spirit of like, I always say, what makes me amazing is that I never lost my little, the little Ryan in me. And I'm curious mm-hmm. like a child, like I have this curiosity and energy that's of like a seven-year-old and I never want to grow up and I say that loud and proud and I never will grow up and so I think about okay how can I have as much impact on the world as possible which is why I started my show and I used to do little tv and radio stuff where I'd go on and become like the marketing expert for like you know new apple iphone drops and how that's going to penetrate the market and da 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 and I was like this is fucking bunk like I don't want this producer telling me what I have to say I'm going to go create my own fucking show. And I want to talk to some of the best people in the world. And that was it. That was the mission. And so that's the mission I've been on. And so my wife was like, yo, this passion project, this was like a year and a half, two years ago, this passion project, man, you love this. And it was almost like I had a hater. I love hate relationship with it. Cause I'm like, well, I own a business. I got to put my time into the, the business I'm running. But I started this and it's like, you do stop the car. But what's amazing is sometimes you stop the car, but you still go through the drive through and the life has life has this way of like seducing you if you let it and you're authentic to yourself of where you need to come out of that drive through and what road and what turn you need to take. And it's it's amazing to me because you have people like yourself. Everybody's had their own walks of life. Um, But yeah, it's great. What question do you hate to be asked? What's one of your most hated interview questions? Like one that's just like, this sucks. Like this interviewer has done no research or just is just mailing it in. Or this is just such a freaking cliche question. Like go Google it. Uh, good question. Um, it's a it's a great question because it's like yeah, like if you want to be a great interviewer, ask some of the people that you interview what makes a fucking great interviewer, <laughs> right? Like, come on, right? I used to I used to do some of my early. I get it. if I had a big guest on, like you know what? Like I'd ask them, I'm like, listen, you've done like 200 interviews in your career. Yeah. Tell me, tell me the good shit. Like, what's the ones? 
and they'll drop it because they they almost become excellent interviewers themselves because they've been interviewed so many times. Yeah, that is huge for sure. I think I can't think of one specific question. Um, I can't think of one thing. I think I stop being nice, Shannon. Don't be nice. Don't be nice. And this is not a burden. This is where you get to be. You can be the most egotistical really okay a hole bad like i just yeah like you can say it all you can say it all no i i don't like surface um questions or like gossip yes yes i don't i i no shock and awe gossip that's not the type of interviews i like to do the questions i it's a short-term hit for a long-term loss, though. Like, even those da- dating shows and things that are, like, you know, very TMZ-ish or, or whatever, like, I mean, there's an entertainment value to it, but I don't know. That residual, I call it the residual soulful currency fruit of life of, account. If you really, because there's levels to the game, right? Like, you got Oprah Winfrey, and then you got some gossip columnist. Like, it, it there's levels to the game. Yeah. So you like deep. You yes, that's why we are on a call talking. Because right you go, there, you go intentional. Um, yes. You go you go to questions and scenarios that make me think. Mm. So yeah. I so I want so then let me ask you this. In your opinion, because I asked you earlier about the guide, do you like to be led or do you like to be guided? And then who asked you the questions, who asked you the most questions in your last three text conversations? And it was the other person. If you're somebody that likes to receive in-depth insight and question, how do you, how should that person respond accordingly? Like, I always ask myself this. I'm like, Ryan, if you ask great questions, and this is in my uh, personal conversations too, I think I can always drum up great conversation with no matter no matter who I talk to because I think I'm insightful. And I think I have the ability to always make that person on the receiving end feel like this guy, he actually wants to know this. Like he's actually curious. He actually wants to know me a little bit. And so I am an expert at making somebody feel heard. I love making people feel heard. If you keep doing that, how do you provoke that person to reciprocate that to you? Ooh, because this is the depth of a great relationship like think about that like if you it's like somebody coming to you and you're like you you know you get these messages right scroll 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 and then you're like whoa that was different you caught your attention and then the person like it's not just like a one-off they're like man this person almost to the point it gets you to be like i need i need to reciprocate back on this how does somebody like you start reciprocating oh Woo! god the gets- the, sh- the shannon Bex Basada conversation formula. <laughs> it's so freaking crucial because like after this, think about this though. Think about every, and I, I mean this sincerely. Think about like those relationships where you're like, like the, Je- what is his name? Jesse Itzler, the husband of the Spanx um, founder. He's done really big things, but I like what he said. He says, I use my December's to go light and then everybody's like what do you mean he's like first of all i want to get ready for 2024 i want to be light i go through my closet i get rid of shit i haven't worn in four months i start reducing friends that don't give me any value i call it the friend reduction system he's like i want to be light when i hit into 2024 so for those people in your life where you're like i want the best relationship how's that person really provoke you to want that i'm basically saying like how do you seduce yourself in a in a in a conversation it's a cheap <laughs> question it's a cheap question but it's a great question it's a great question um who you know for it's funny that a lot of the people that are closest to me um they know me they they know if i don't reach out for like four months it's not because i don't think about <laughs> yes i appreciate space Ooh. Um, without, um, without punishment. So 
maybe I just, I, maybe that just is a, it's long-term relationships I've had. Like, I don't know. It, it's just, how am I saying this? I don't know if I'm well, answering can, your question. Well, well, can I, well, let me ask you this way, maybe, because what if you're somebody that says, I want to make new old friendships. Can you make new old friendships? New old friendships. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, yes. Mm. But that, that takes you trying to understand what they're going, what they need from that relationship. Mm. And they need to build the trust in that relationship, mm. not what you need from that relationship. Do you give trust or does trust have to be earned? I give trust. Ooh, okay. All right. Wow. And then what have and then are you or have you ever been so naive where somebody's like, yo, Shannon, this person, <laughs> yo, you're giving that trust. And that is not, yo, you need to uh you might want to address that a little bit. <laughs> I find when you pour into people genuinely and you allow them to have a trust. Mm. You, there's a, you're almost setting an unspoken expectation that takes time sometimes, but they'll they'll want to live up to. They'll want to they'll want to your your compound consistency in mm. that kind of unconditional love of the relationship. It's yeah, it's not conditional. It's Ooh. souls no. I I like you said uh, appreciate space without punishment. Whoa. But when you see those videos, because I want to play the devil's advocate. I love this shit, by the way. I hope you can understand and <laughs> and appreciate. But when you see those videos that say, stop being friends with people that don't pour into your cup as much as you pour into theirs, there's a big caveat there, is basically what you're saying. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. What, so what would the cat, like, how would you explain, like, what would you say, like, but like, what would Shannon say after the, but you might want to consider, you know, X. Well, what are, is this a season that they, they're taking more than they're giving? Um, maybe you know, it's, it's like, how it's like when I, somebody I, says, it's like when somebody says like Shannon, you know, like, or, Hey, you know, we're going to, you remember back in the day, like people would be like, okay, what are you doing on Friday night or Saturday night? It's like, okay. And people literally would go through like their six like options. Like, well, you know, I'll get back to you. Like, we're going to see you. So they kind of bet the other five options. There's people out there that were always never the option. Like they okay. never were the option. That's a good point. People can't be, people can't be your everything. Mm. And when we put pressure on people to provide our, our needs and be our everything and be our rock, we will be disappointed. Mm. We will be let down mm. vice versa. No one can expect you or me to be their everything. Mm. That's mm. not fair. No, none of us are perfect. And Correct. that was my eye opener when I was even, I was in high school and I was like, you know, I think my boyfriend had broken up with me and, you know, my parents were going through separation and I, the people I trusted and were around me and I the, were my rocks were failing me, you know, in my teenage stresses. Um, I was like, wow, you know, God is the only thing, the only one that can be my rock, my Ooh. consistent, constant. Ooh. And it's not fair for me to put my expectations of perfection and what I need people to fulfill in me on them. Mm. They're not, they're not built for that. So I think we mm. all need to have a bit more grace. <laughs> each other. Well, I, I agree. I agree with that. Um, what a great conversation. Is there anything you'd like to add to it, Shannon? You know what? You could ask me one question if you like anything you want. Question. Yeah, I will yeah. answer. Uh, I will get one question that you have for me. If there's any, because you're a curious person, and I've I, um, I've interrogated you enough uh, on this conversation, and our last one. So um, I'm really, I'm really grateful for you. I'm grateful for you too. Um, and I know last time I asked you a specific question of what made you so curious, but now I want to know 
anyone, past, present, future, obviously not future, um, who are you most curious to get inside of the brain of? Who would you like to talk to? Ooh. Oh, honestly, and I know this is going to sound cliche, it's my mom. Because my mom passed away when I was 13 and was a single mom. And I think about, it's funny because as I'm a parent now, um, yeah. I think about those 13 years of how my mom poured into me. Um, and it was interesting because when I was six, seven years old, she always used to say, Ryan, you're going to be, you're either going to be um, somebody that's like public facing, like some sort of performer or face the public, or you're going to be an amazing lawyer or a business yeah. person or all three. And it was really interesting because yeah. growing up, she was extremely strict. I, I remember her so clearly, but there was, this is kind of, I think my love for interviewing, I got um, featured here uh, on like a, a major news network and they did an expose on kind of my journey and like how I did my my show. And it was interesting because the lady that interviewed, she brought up how a story that I told. And so my mom, every single night before we went, went to bed, would literally, we would listen to this radio show. It's called the Tom Lucas radio show. And for an hour before bed, and literally, I'm not joking, we could come home at like, seven o'clock at night or if we got in the door late at midnight and she's like nope we got to spend our hour and we would just talk on the bed listening to this radio show and she would tell me how great i was going to be literally yeah. just how great i was going to be and she would send me to the bank at like age 11 12 with handwritten notes saying like He's going to deposit a check because back in the day, I don't know if you remember, like you didn't you couldn't do all the stuff on your phone. You had to take in paper checks and all that stuff. And I would be like, people would be like, yo, like, what are you? Why are you having your kid go do that? She made me an absolute fucking assassin at such a young age. Like she got me ready for what life was going to throw at me. And I never I just never understood that. But my mom literally would say to me, Ryan, I just don't think I'm living up until age 50. And I couldn't like and she was 42 when she passed away. And I just remember that it was heartbreaking because I was like, I'd be like, mom, why, like, why are you saying that? And 42 and she had a heart attack and I was watching um, a football game. And this is kind of how I started even playing football. Cause I was, I was so upset and mad that thank God at age 13, I, I started playing football cause I got to take all my anger out, but she had a heart attack. And so I went in there and it was, it was the most traumatic uh, thing that I'll ever go through. And so I do believe in life. You need to choose your enemies wisely. And so my enemy I always chose was the death of my mom. And it's the crux of why I do what I do. And I just, I, I'm not really fearful of a lot. Um, the only thing I'm really fearful of is life itself and the higher power. Cause I'm like, life can touch you anytime it wants, but that is the person that I would love the most to sit out and be like, damn mom, you're brilliant. And when I, you know, I do a lot of history check on her, like, and so I remember when she would take me to these because she was a business person. She was one of the very first like financial um, uh, mutual fund thing at a bank here in Canada. And then she would open up her own janitorial business that was like she she built this janitorial company to like there's literally a company called Busy Bee now that bought this company. So my mom was doing fucking OG startup VC shit in like the 80s like early 80s and so we talk about gender gap and all that now but i'm yeah. like think about that shit back in the early 80s how bad it was oh my gosh so yeah. then i'm like yo like if i was ever to stand up here and be like i'm ryan and i created all this by myself i'm like no you had a woman pour into you for like 13 years which i think is why i'm like 80 percent of my clients are women i mean even growing up like i play football and i'm like i don't want to chill with the guys I want to go and fucking look at shoes. I want to go <laughs> shopping. I started I started stealing my sister's facial products when I was like 13. Like I'm like, do you wax thread or pluck your eyebrows? I fucking pluck. Like it's, I'm like, my wife calls me her best friend that um, is gay. I'm a gay best friend, masculine husband all in one. And so She's just like, you're phenomenal. Like you're just, you're just that dude. And so I'm very comfortable in my masculine and feminine energy, but I was raised by a woman. I, I was raised by a woman. And even my son, it's funny. Cause as a, as a guy, I always think of little things like 
I wish my dad would would have you know could have threw a football with me or t- you know taught me how to tie my tie or taught me how to shave. And so I'm doing all these things now with my son, and I'm like, oh. So I look at him all the time, I'm like Deja. I'm like, do you know that dad and you are doing this for the first time together? He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I've never got to do this before, and it's just. It's amazing. So that is my answer. I would love to sit down with my mom because she's just, and I'm so happy that I get to say that about my mom. Cause I think a lot of people out there, they don't get to say that about their parents. Oh, it's so true. It's a bittersweet, but so beautiful. And she did, she poured an amazing, amazing yeah. stuff. In, and we Thanks. get the benefit from it. Oh, so. thank you, well, Shannon. Shannon, well, I want to ask, I, I want to ask you one thing. What yeah. is one person though? Or let's say one person that on your whole journey that you're like, let's go besides your husband too. Cause I don't, that, that could be like a cheat code answer. Cause he obviously he's, he's amazing. You, mar- <laughs> you married him. But is there one person where you're like, damn, that person was like at the intersection of change in my life for the better. Um, or is there one person that you're like, I'm so obsessed with sitting down with this person for 30 minutes and just like asking them any question. Gosh, um, only one, only one, only one. Like, you're just like, this person's not human. Like they're the way they think the way, like, I don't even, wow. You know, just obsessed. Is the person I've met them and I just want to go back. No, and and anybody, anybody met, not met anybody on your journey, not on your journey. Hmm. <laughs> I read a lot of books. Is there anyone I would want? To I really, to be fair, I never had. I, I enjoyed certain artists. I enjoyed. I enjoy when people can bring like thoughts and value. But I've never um, fanned out or mm. obsessed over or been glued to a single person of mm. every move. I just never, I never did that. Um, I don't do you, ever th- do you ever think that because you're, and I'm sorry, we're going over time here, but this conversation is too, <laughs> this conversation is too good. Um, yeah. Do you ever think that there's like, like, okay, for example, people will be like, Ryan, yo, did you watch a football game last week? Like the stats on it and all that? And it's, it's so weird because I played football at like a, such a high level. Like I even got a scholarship and played in Los Angeles and everything, even from Canada. And so I met a lot of like great football players, all that stuff. And I'm like, no, I actually don't watch football at all. And they're like, what? But you, you know, back in the day and this, I'm like, sure. you know, there's a difference between being a fan in the stands and then being in the game performing. And so I feel like with football, it like I'm at peace with, this was a like I it's such a monumental part of my life and success. And I literally take what I learned in football into like daily business practice yeah. that I just I don't I don't know. It's like that that was my piece of football. And I'm not interested in even really watching a game now. I love it. I have a I this is one of this is called my I am enough. Well, I got one of my very fo- first football helmets that I ever wore on the back there and I pay homage to it. But I'm like. Me and football, we seduced each other. I'm I'm good. Got a lot of fucking memories. I'm good. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to say. I'm seduced. Yeah, that's fair. I, I could definitely relate to that. Yeah. Okay, if you can't answer that about fandom, then before I let you go, tell me two books that describe you as Shannon Beck's The Best. Well, I haven't two written books. I haven't written the book yet, so. Ooh, okay, okay. Inspired. <laughs> Two books that you're like, damn, this is um, this is I, a part of my li- my my life cheat code. Gosh, well, uh, the Bible for me, like being able to yeah. study in the yeah. Word and kind of get yeah. this for life, first hands down. Um. I'm trying to think of, I read a lot of business books. I'm trying to think of one that has absolutely stood out to me. Um, that I, I honestly, 
it, I, I've been finding a challenge of something that resonates to me. I learn knowledge. I have facts that I can gain, mm. but relating, relating the, with the type, like that's why I joke, like I haven't written the book yet. Cause the type of journey I had is, it's not in any business book. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no. There's so many people out there that probably have the same headspace that I do that don't see themselves. So are you going to write a book? I've, played with the idea but you best yeah. be sending me a message being like yo ryan i'm going on my book tour yo hit me yeah, up and you good. and you know and you know you know your homie ryan yes, will make sure he good. asks you only the very best questions to you really always. get inside that brain of why people should go out and get that damn book and write that five-star review on amazon <laughs> and the mic drop on that <laughs> right Shannon, uh, hey, uh, this has been amazing. Uh, I really appreciate you. Listen, uh, tell everybody that's listening, you know, where they can find you or what projects mean the world to you. I know it ain't on Instagram, uh, but, you know, what is going on in Shannon's world? Where would you like everybody to go? Um, yeah. Plug yourself away. I absolutely am, yeah, most active on LinkedIn. So go find me. <laughs> so, it's so <laughs> random. So I love you're, it. you're a I weird it. person. Okay. Like you're weird. Okay. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I kind of hesitate following the crowd. I'm not a, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't like yeah. to do what is expected of me, I suppose. Maybe that's my sneaky Like stuff. everybody's out there on like TMZ and Hollywood being like, yo, hit up my Insta. You're like, yo, 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 <laughs> hit up my LinkedIn. You know me, yo, go to LinkedIn. Yeah. Connect, connect. Like, yo. Hit up. Oh it's like, gosh. but I thought you're a performer. I thought you like dancing. Yeah, yeah, but I'm all like, like for you. I created a new social platform. You know what it's called? Linkstagram. LinkedIn and Instagram had a baby. Her name's Shannon. Go hit me up on Linkstagram. I like it. You and I will be the only ones on there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, last question though, if you don't have anything, um, is what can I do for you? Uh, thank you so much. And honestly, just thank you for living the life you've lived and um having the kind of impact you have and i i mean i've read a lot of people's comments whether it's youtube past videos comments blogs i did a lot of homework on you and just to see you got i mean the fans to this day they're like yo like oh my god you know uh, you, what an impact like wow yeah it's it's truly been a journey that i don't take for granted and i appreciate you caring to ask the questions and um, what can you do for me? I feel like you've already you've already done it, but I won't claim it yet because we have a long journey ahead of us, Ryan. We're so glad you enjoyed this episode of the Ryan Holtz Show podcast. Please don't forget to smash that five star review as Team Holtz will love you for it. Also, say hi to Ryan anywhere on social media using the handle at Ryan Holtz one. That's R-Y-A-N-H-O-L-T-Z, the number one. And if you or your business is looking to expand your brand, book a brand jam with Ryan using the link in the show notes.